Hi there and welcome! I'll help guide you in your journey to start designing and making your very own robots. In the previous video, part 2, we looked at the difference between analog and digital signals. If you haven't seen part 1 and 2, make sure to check it out. I've included links in the description below. In this video, we'll take a look at how that affects the circuit design. How different are these two approaches? Very different, actually. Let's see the components these different approaches use. An analog circuit uses two classes of components. Active components and passive components. Active components are components that require external power to work. They can deliver energy into the circuit that controls or changes signals. Passive components, on the other hand, don't require external power and simply allow the signals to flow. Because of their properties, they will alter the signal and flow of electricity, but will not actively change it. In a way, we can say that active components change the signal with capability of adding energy or amplifying. Passive components change the signal, which result in lowering the energy of the signal. Examples of active components are transistors, operational amplifiers, also called op-amps, and other integrated devices. They all have amplifying characteristics. Examples of passive components are resistors, capacitors, diodes, and so on they have no amplifying characteristics. An analog circuit is a combination of passive and active components. You can say we use passive components to alter a signal, and then run it through one or more active components, and so on. A digital circuit uses a totally different approach. There was a time where digital circuits were built similar to analog circuits, with separate components. Most of those components were active integrated circuits. Nowadays, however, that's a thing of the past, and digital projects all revolve around microcontrollers. The most common boards in hobby robotics are the Arduinos, which most of you will have heard of. They are built around a microcontroller. The board makes it convenient to connect other parts of your design. A microcontroller is in fact one big active component. It's an integrated circuit. That means inside the microcontroller chip, there is a full digital circuit built on a microscopic level. It contains a bunch of input and output electronics and a central processing device. The working process of a microcontroller is quite an extended topic, which I won't go into too deep. But here's a simplified explanation. The microcontroller consists first of all of the central processor. That is the device that runs through the lines of code that you have programmed. The speed which it runs through the code is controlled by the clock. That is basically just a pulse signal, which runs at a few megahertz. Typical Arduinos run at 16 megahertz, which means that the clock signal pulses 16 million times a second. Second, there is a memory block, which the central processor uses to keep track of what it is doing. Then we have the input block, where our input signals are being converted into binary codes for the processor to use. Similar is the output block, which converts the output binary code into output signals. In the next video, we will take a look at an example where we will design an analog as well as a digital design. We will compare those side by side. Stay tuned to learn more about how to start with making robots. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.